Welcome back viewers to Chungu Chajami. Today we are talking about why we should take care of our elderly and not neglect them. On the show I have a panel of two guests who are helping us to understand how to take care of them, how to merge them with us and how to move forward with them. Taking, their, taking care of their health issues, taking them of their well-being generally, socially, and also having time to relate to them. Before we went on a break, Mr. Elijah, you're talking about uh, how the government should come in. And uh, Mr. Jack wanted to support on the same. Yes. Yes. The government has, has a lot to, to do as, as, as us to enact some laws to do that. Mm -hmm. But I again think mm -hmm. we have a challenge with the church. We have a big challenge with the church mm -hmm. because the church is closer to the people than even the government. Uh, we have read uh, from our teacher Jesus the story about the Good Samaritan uh, who is a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. If we don't instill that mindset by the, church, by the church to the society, to the people, then I don't think by mm -hmm. enacting laws itself alone mm -hmm. will solve the problem. Mm -hmm. So we need to have caravan, we need to have seminars in the churches, young people seminars, mm -hmm. being taught on how to take care of the elderly, mm -hmm. their needs. Mm -hmm. Because what you, what you do sometimes is think that it is Christmas season, I want to buy some juices, send them back home, and you don't know whether your uh, elderly needs, uh, whether he's diabetic or he's supposed to take such kind of, you're just buying gift, as Mr. Elijah said, which is not um, health friendly. So to come in, the government has its lot to play, but the church has a bigger role to play. Mm -hmm. Because we meet every Sunday. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice. Given that we meet every Sunday, yeah. and given that uh, for the greater part we've been talking about the challenges, now I would, I would want to put uh, and understand, uh, given that the both of you are having different organization, having to, to talk with the elderly, having to listen to their problems, uh, what is the way forward? Now, given uh, way forward as families, way forward as the society, and also as the government, because I've heard Mr. Elijah saying that uh, we should, the, the, the government should uh, come up with a law that is going to enhance taking care of the old. So what is the way forward, other than that of the government coming in? Where do we come in? Those, who are, those of us who are close to these, peop to these elderly, the family members, the children, the grandchildren, the neighbors, now you've mentioned about the church. How do we work together for the betterment of the elderly and having a solution way forward? We'll start with you, Mr. Elijah. Uh, one is uh, we have to go back to the roots. From childhood, we were taken to church, we were taken to Sunday schools, and we were taught of Ephesians chapter 6. Ye children, obey your parents. This is the first commandment with a promise. This is where we have gone wrong because we have forgotten the first. Mm -hmm. Every member of the society should remember this is the first commandment with a promise that we honor and respect the elderly. Number two, we start engaging in societal issues where we give respect to the older people. They give us the wisdom that they have. We don't, if we don't do that, then we go wrong. Why I always blame is that even as we age, we age as Christians, we deserve to go to the church, we deserve to be preached upon, we deserve to be given chance to to do things that matter in the churches, but you will find that older people, especially nowadays, rarely they go to the church because the churches have become so noisy, sometimes so urbanized, that the older people cannot fit in the environment. A lot needs to be done to address issues of elder abuse in our society. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jack. Yeah, I'll come in briefly and say mm -hmm. uh, the bottom line lies with the church. Mm -hmm. We must, must go back to Pentecost and be our neighbor's keeper. And by doing so, is organizing either seminars or conferences that sensitizes the young people or now to be your neighbor's keeper. Mm -hmm. that, that precisely mm -hmm. lies with the church. Mm -hmm. And the church has the resources mm -hmm. that can be able to take care mm -hmm. of such people. Mm -hmm. the, the churches can lie us with organizations like Arika or Imarisha and identify the widows which the church is supposed to take care of, the deprived one, the vulnerable one, who have no support systems. And by that, we'll be solving lots and lots more of problems. Mm -hmm. So again, the church has a bigger role to play in the elder care program. And mm -hmm. also, in addition, we have to appreciate the organizations of older people which are in existence. For the good work they are doing, yeah. let us put our efforts together mm -hmm. so that we bring our older people into aging gracefully. I have a question before we wind up. Mm -hmm. You've mentioned about uh, elderly not going to churches. And uh, you say, you mentioned about churches being noisy and uh, the environment not being friendly. My question comes in now. Should the church have a different service for the elderly? Should they mm. have a different hall for them? Because now we are in a service, we have the youth. If again we say we go by pleasing the elderly, the youth, the youth will miss out on the service. If we go again pleasing the youth, now the elderly are missing. The parents are misplaced. Should we have services like we have Sunday school, we have the main service, we have the youth, we have the teen. We have, should we have an, a, a, a group, social group in church that is saying this one is for the old. Let's have a private or a different service for them whereby uh, we'll be able to talk maybe in Swahili. We'll be Precisely. able to talk in the vernacular language where they will understand. And also if you're talking in vernacular language, we have 42 tribes. How am I going to list down in the language that they will best understand. Precisely, I would say you have gotten it right. Mm -hmm. It's about innovation. When we talk of church, let us innovate in order to carry everybody because mm -hmm. we are society for all. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a Kenya without older people? Mm -hmm. Can you imagine a Kenya without a young generation? Mm -hmm. So we have to be very inclusive. Mm -hmm. And this is very serious and I am always pushing for this. Mm -hmm. Because who is not important in our church? Mm -hmm. Is it the older person? Mm -hmm. Is it the young person? Mm -hmm. We should innovate a way of carrying our older people mm -hmm. together with us. Mm -hmm. We are not limited, but let us create an environment for all. How I wish we should have a society for all ages. This issue of segregating as per the age deprives some others the rights. Mm -hmm. Older people have a right to go to the church and enjoy fully. Young children has also right to enjoy equally. So how are we going to innovate? to have like, for example, one hour for the older people, two hours for the young people, three hours for the children, and this would work for our society. Given oh. said that, uh, Mr. Jack, I'll give you uh, time to, 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 to echo out your views as I ask this, and uh, as you also, once you echo out, you also give us your parting shot. You've mentioned about the services having maybe one hour for the elderly, two hours for the youth, three. Will the member of the clergy not going to be drained because now it's like having the whole day in church? Let me Mr. tell you, Le actually it will not <laughs> because uh -huh. had it, is it not, if it were not for the mainstream churches, all other churches are fighting because there are so many trained pastors who have no time to preach and the Sunday is only a 12 hour day, <laughs> please. 
Mr. Jack. Well, what I would say on that mm -hmm. is that um, uh, we should be able to come up with innovative ways of doing it, mm -hmm. not congesting Sunday per se okay. on those services. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let, let's have fellowships mm -hmm. on other days of the week. Mm -hmm. And a good example is that every Wednesday, we have a fellowship across here, mm -hmm. which is full to the capacity, mm -hmm. attended by the elderly. Mm -hmm. And they sing in their vernacular, mm -hmm. they sing in their Swahili, and they like the preaching. So that doesn't affect the Sunday strict program. Mm -hmm. And we have other ministers who are coming up. Mm -hmm. So we are not going to overload the men of cloth, the mm -hmm. senior pastors. Mm -hmm. We also assign others. And then do other outreaches in the villages. Oh, especially taken, yeah. mm -hmm. with a lot of caution mm -hmm. yeah. we are not segregating the young generation yeah. mm -hmm. we would be addressing both yes. and we need to come up into intergenerational society, society. society. Thank you. now we are running out of time could you briefly in one minute the both of you give us a punchline on the same because I have just learned we have so much to deal with so much to learn and so much to educate about this topic of taking care of the elderly. We'll start with you, Mr. Jack. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Elderly care in this country now is more urgent, more important than never before. Mm -hmm. And serious measures need to be taken. Uh, we are the people on the front line taking the serious steps that needs to be taken to avoid the catastrophe which is to be for the nation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Elijah. Uh, I would wish to ask all Kenyans to understand nobody wants to die young. If we are not uh, willing to die young, what are we doing to prepare for our future age? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Elijah, Mr. Jack, for coming in and sharing so much. I've also realized that at a personal level, I still have a lot to learn and uh, a lot to put forward to. And uh, I believe our viewers have learned the same as I have. Viewers, I hope you've taken notes and uh, understood how to take care of our elderly. Uh, as a parting shot and at a take home for me, as we have understood that the church has a greater responsibilities to work hand in hand with these elderly people, that uh, it's not only that you're supposed to overcrowd the Sunday service sessions, that also we can come in in the weekday session. Also for those who are sick, those who are having long-term illness, issues to do with their health, that we are supposed to step forward and take or assign them caregivers who are educated and who understand issues to do with the elderly. I hope we can have more time next time to invite them and take more notes on the same. Thank you for staying tuned till this time. I'm your host Eunice Mugo. Continue this conversation across all our social media networks that's GBS TV Africa. Our SMS line is to the Buanda Goodbye for now.